Right everybody, so in video 1416 we made this. It's a home-made thermopile made from copper and if you want exact construction details just jump over to video 1416 and I'll put a link at the end of this video. But when we put a flame on that it works really really well. So it takes a little bit of time to get going, but once you get it going, it actually produces enough to light that little LED. And then we followed that up by making this, and this is a magnetohydrodynamic generator using the flame to generate, and again, it worked surprisingly well. Now, the build details of that are in video 1421, and again, I'll put a link at the end of this video, but when we put a blowtorch on that, we get a surprisingly good result. One thing about these is they look strikingly similar, don't they? I mean, we've got some copper wire, we're applying some heat, and some mysterious way it generates a bit of electricity. And you would think that there was a, a commonality between these two, because they look so similar, and, and they operate from the basic, basic same energy input. But actually, they're extraordinarily different, and they're using different principles to generate. Now we've done this as part of our rocket stove for third generation project that we're working on when we're looking at lots of different ways that we could possibly generate from a rocket stove. Now this one, this one is a thermally activated MIM diode and it uses a diff the difference in heat to move the electrons past that diode so they can't come back. Because they can't come back it means they can only go one route around that circuit and that's to generate electricity. So this is a thermal generator based on a diode. That's what this is, using heat difference. And that really matters. And this one, this one has got nothing to do with that. Actually, the um, heat that we apply is relatively inconsequential. This is actually much more similar to a standard motor stroke generator. This uses the movement of a conductive fluid through a magnetic field. So these are only electrodes to pick up that current. They don't actually do anything in themselves. So this could be absolutely anything you wanted to be, anything that would conduct. I used copper because we have copper, but it's not a particularly good material to use in here as the electrode pick up. Tungsten would be good, nichrome would be good, but the metal isn't contributing anything to this particular setup at all. Neither is the heat of the flame. The flame is moving through a magnetic field. Now, we put some potassium ions in there to make that flame a conductive flame. Flames at low temperatures, when I say low temperatures, we're talking about seven, eight, nine hundred degrees centigrade. They are relatively low temperatures, believe it or not. But flames at low temperatures will conduct, just not very well unless we add ions, and that way we make that a conductive flame. And because it's conductive, it now operates in the same way that a generator operates, a standard wire-wound generator. We have ourselves a magnetic field, we're moving the conductor through that magnetic field, and of course, it generates. Now there is ion separation that goes on in here, because of course it's going through a magnetic field, so the ions and electrons will be diverted, and we'll get ion separation. But these go into the flame to collect the current that's been generated because a conductor is moving through a magnetic field. So despite the fact that these look very similar, the principles they operate on are very, very different. This is much more like a Peltier using a Seebeck effect. It isn't. It's actually a uh, MIM diode as opposed to an NPN junction. This is much more like a generator and works in the very same principle. Now, I thought I'd take the time to do that because there does seem a little bit of confusion with people suggesting putting coils in here. The coils wouldn't really work because we've got an um, electrode pickup and they need to be separated to get the negative and the positive. Otherwise, nothing will happen. <coughs> 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 
So understanding the difference between the two should help think about how it is that you're going to improve them. Now this is MHD generation. You'll find this in power stations today. It's actually just a desktop model of what you find in a power station today. And there are ways of, of improving this. And several people have asked about the magnets. And of course we've used permanent magnets because it's a desktop model. We could put the magnets on the outside. It doesn't matter. I put them on the inside for neatness, to be honest. It could be on the outside, in which case we could cool them. We need to keep them below the Curie temperature. The Curie temperature is the point at which they'll lose their magnetism. Now, for ceramic magnets like this, that Curie temperature is around about 450 degrees centigrade. So although the flame going through here is 800 degrees centigrade, once it gets out to this far, the chances of reaching that Curie temperature are actually quite low. Now remember, we're not using the heat per se. I mean, it's a difficult one because basically heat and movement are in fact the same thing. So if we're using some movement, we're using some heat, certainly. But let's just say for argument's sake and the sake of the model, the heat is not what's important. It's the movement of the conductor through the magnetic field that is responsible for the generation. So this section, we don't really need to insulate it because the heat itself isn't doing anything. So if we don't insulate it, then we're not going to get beyond that Curie temperature. Samarium cobalt magnets, incidentally, have a Curie temperature of around about 800, 850 degrees centigrade. Neodymium has a Curie point of around about 370 degrees centigrade. Now, just like any generator where you've got a moving conductor through a magnetic field, the strength of the magnetic field is clearly important. What they do in industry, in fact, is use a portion of the... Um, energy generated to feed it back into coils are pretty much uh, similar to how you see generators when the field and the stator are powered by them uh, their own input as it were and it's the excess that you draw off for generation it's equally the same thing here because it's the movement is the input of the energy not the flow of the electricity so as long as there's sufficient movement to generate the um, field magnets that you need there's excess to draw off and it would be the same situation here so you would be able to put coils on this and create a magnetic field that way and draw off the excess which is what you're going to be using as opposed to the uh, energy itself the electricity itself so there are lots and lots of ways of overcoming the magnetic limitation here and a quick read around MHD generation industry will suggest far more than I've just suggested. This is a simple model construct and will work. It has its own issues, like everything has its own issues. This is a simple model to construct as well and, and works as well, just at, at less than this. But it has less issues. Some of the issues around about this are in fact its power generation. Now, a lot of people are suggesting uh, Peltier devices, but remember, Peltier devices, unless they're high temperature, held together with sol uh, solder. So around about 250-ish degrees centigrade, it's going to melt. And of course, this is highly likely to get to 250. You can buy high temperature Peltier devices, but they're even more expensive than Peltier devices and, and less efficient. So there are solutions always. And what we're looking at when we're looking at uh, these kind of things, actually, are uh, the variety of answers that we can explore. And the reason we're looking at that variety of answers is because there is no one answer. If you talk to a person, they'll have a particular favourite they love and they'll promote that as the answer. But actually, there are lots of answers and exploring them is all part of it. But this seemed to be causing a little confusion about what it was that was operating as a mechanism between these two devices. And as I said, they're very different mechanisms. This one's much more akin to a Peltier. This one's much more akin to a general generator. Anyway, I thought I'd spend a bit of time just going through that. I hope it was of interest. Thank you very much for watching.